And it goes a little yeah. something like Welcome to my grade 9 UCSU series And today, of course, I'm going to be doing I've got three nines in GTSU science And if you don't know, I did physics science So I did biology, chemistry and physics And I got three grades from that and this video is also helpful for students who do double science because they can do the same thing that you have to do to get nice and everything. The main thing in science is to look at your specification and to understand it. So whenever you're revising, open that specification, put it on the side or like split your computer screen into two, put the specification on the side, which is what I do now which I should have learned at year 10 which is just it's just because your textbook and Rohan and Guide can go on and on and still not like mention one part of the specification and when that part of the specification comes up you will just be like oh wait they didn't teach us this you don't need to necessarily be taught something to know that you need to know for your exam anything in the specification absolutely anything could come up and let's say specifically say that um you don't need to know the details of this you don't need to know the details of that, you don't need to know how this works in detail. We started learning about Bowman's capsule when, in the specification, I'll put it here, it doesn't say, it specifically doesn't say learn Bowman's capsule, learn um, all of this. So make sure you know your specification inside out, because I do, especially for value, because I know that some things that goes on in lessons won't come up in exam. And they'll just tell you every single thing you need to know. So just make sure you know it and make sure you understand it. The other thing is mygcscience.com. And you guys will probably think I'm sponsored by them at this point. But I just love them. Their videos are amazing. The lady who does the chemistry videos actually has some lives on her Instagram where she goes through A level and BTSC topics. So make sure you check that out. My GCSE science or free science lessons are really good for just understanding and memorization because you not only learn visually but you learn verbally as well so it's more likely for you to retain the knowledge and then you should take down the essential notes from the videos and make a little folder I might show you guys one of my folders that I had so let me just get that it is quite organized but it does not have these I hope you can see that these are checklists for the specification so I have literally everything that you need to know um, this is biology because I can't find my physics ones, I don't know where they went. But my idea is science has these on every single science, which is really helpful. It helps you highlight which things you know and which things you don't know. And it makes the specification more friendly because if you look at it, it's a bit daunting and it's a bit long. So yeah, make sure you find a checklist. There can probably be a free one on tests or something or just Google. So make sure you get one. So if we look at my physics folder, this is where my essential notes were. So this is my first page on LED changes in a system. Um, I always have some color coded things such as key info. I used to highlight almost everything, which is a problem, but make sure you don't do that. And I was always put essential equations in a specific color. Um, I always learned how to put some spaces between my sentences because it just makes it easier to revise from and it doesn't look so messy. I always made sure I printed out things instead of drawing them because it just wastes time and I don't think they'll ever ask you to draw a, um, what, what is this, hydroelectric generator. I don't think they'll ask you. This is what I did towards the end of, towards exam season and towards the end of exam season. I made these questions on every single chapter so basically it just had questions like a lot of questions which basically covered the specification for that chapter so to test myself I would read these and on the back there's normally the answers but I didn't put these on them I put them on my word document on my laptop so yeah I think this is really helpful it goes through um, almost every subtopic inside the topic so yeah organization is key to passing the sciences you can't really do it about notes unless you have photographic memory but it's quite uncommon for that to happen and another thing is from magazine science or any other resource such as physics and math tutor just searching up science questions on google 
Make sure you do them and make sure you mark them. Marking them and learning from the mistakes are the most important things to do. You can't just do a basket of work and then look at it after and be like, oh, I don't want to mark it because there would be no point in doing the past paper anyway. Because the point of past papers and exam questions are to highlight your weaknesses so you can revise them and you can try that paper again and try to get a better grade. Make sure you use higher grade boundaries when marking your stuff because you have to be harsh on yourself. You can't give yourself a grade 9 even though you know in your heart that you've got a grade 6 because it's just not fair on yourself you will have higher expectations for yourself in the real exam which can lead you to being pressurized this will result in you having a worse grade than when you started off so make sure you just treat yourself like a mean math teacher and give yourself a bad level if you think that is representative of you in that paper in the cgp science papers there was like a rough grade boundary on the front and it was like 70 percent for seven 80 percent for nine something like that but or if you're just very strict and I feel like it made me learn that you need to get a lot of marks the grade boundaries are not depending on any random factor but on how everyone else did so if everyone else did better this year the grade boundaries will be higher so it'll be harder to get a 9 so another thing is to blurt um, if you're a fan of Unleaded Jade or most study grammars you would have known that blurting is like the process of regurgitating everything from a topic onto a sheet of paper in a certain amount of time. This allows you to highlight what you don't know and see what you do know and then you can compare this to like a revision resource such as your notes or a little flashcard that you wrote I mean, or a little post-it note that you wrote that has all of the mini topics in that subtopic so you can know what you missed out. And from this you can know what to revise because there's no point in revising every single thing that you already know. There's only a point towards the exam season to revise stuff that you don't know so that you are prepared for when it comes up in the exam. Because I assure you, something that you don't think will come up will definitely come up. So don't be assuming that just because you didn't revise it, it will come up because there's a high chance it will. The another thing is to do flashcards only for the things that you don't understand or remember. When I was doing GCSEs, people would make flashcards of like the whole specification even though they knew it in their heart that they knew what was on most of those flashcards, which is just a waste of time. The process of writing flashcards is not really revision because you can write something but when it's there in your head unless you have practiced it over and over again, no. It's only if you keep recalling, active recalling, reading and writing is not enough to get a grade 9. You need to understand and you need to be able to recall facts quickly. So make sure you always revise things you don't understand until you understand them or until you memorize them. So you should aim to roughly like test yourself in anything in the book and know the right answer. But this is obviously like a very unreasonable task, but this is what they want us to do for GCSEs now. So you have to try your best to know everything. Well, if not know everything then understand everything because the basis of GCSE is just understanding things. When you understand things you don't really need to memorise them, it's just common sense to you then. So yeah, make sure you understand things and make sure you know things. Like the certain facts like a equation for physics, so there was many, 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 many electricity equations that you had to remember. And the way that I actually use equations is actually a big factor on how I got online. So basically, they will definitely not tell you the equation that will come up in each question. So you need to know which applies to which. You need to know how to use your equation booklet or sheet to help you. So um, there's certain equations, like 20 equations that you need to know off by head, I think. And you just need to use flashcards. So the way I did this was with my friends. I made flashcards and I would put the um, question on the front, like what links the, what equation links time, volume, um, whatever, whatever, this is not a real equation. You would pick something for the other person to turn around and then you would pick what they told you to turn around and then if you get it right, you got to keep it. If they didn't get it right, you had to keep it there. And the person who won was the person who had the most cards at the end and you can kind of find a reward for your friends or just the reward is the satisfaction of knowing that you know these equations. And basically, you want to just go over all of the equations your friends didn't know all the equations you didn't know just to reinforce that knowledge so you understand it and so you remember it and for equations especially you need to know all the units you need to know what units 
apply to which letter or if it's a word you need to know what units apply because it could be meters squared or it could be centimeters squared you need to know which so you can convert to units but they'll always ask you something like blah 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 in milligrams as if you've ever done that before you just need to know the conversion factors and how you can convert one to another and you need to know it basically because in the question there's only so many equations they can ask you so if they give something like kilograms, um, temperature change, so you see the Celsius um, symbol and you see the energy symbol, then you know it's going to be the energy change equals mc delta t. So you should just use that equation because you know all of the units that belong to that specific equation. So always make sure you look at the units before you answer the question. Another important thing is to make sure you teach your friends, especially if they don't understand something, because you teaching them not only reinforces your knowledge, but make sure that you can apply it to different situations and make sure that you actually understand it in your brain, like you actually know how to apply it to anything that they can write to you. For example, in the exams that we did, they made you do a lot of application questions it wasn't just simply regurgitating facts like give one name for blah 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 give one fact some blah 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 it's more about like using the fact to your advantage into answering a question there's only so much they can ask you to regurgitate because after a while it just wouldn't be a test on your ability it would just be a test on your memory which it kind of is anyway because to apply the knowledge you have, you must have all of the knowledge. It is quite a bad system, but it's what we have to do. So overall, um, I will go with my main tips for getting a grade nine in science. That is to always use the specification. Always use resources like videos such as my GCC Science or freesciencelessons.com on YouTube. And make sure you bag out the exam questions and past papers, especially those of CVP, because they are amazing. Um, and just magic science because I was doing them the day before the exam and I can't even tell you how many questions came up that everyone else was so confused about but I actually knew what the answer was because I just did it the day before or the week before or the two weeks before but it's just essential that you bang up these past paper questions because you can know the whole specification but if you don't know how they will ask you things from the specification then it's pretty much a waste of time right they could throw anything at you and you need to know how to answer it the way the marks do want you to answer it and another thing is active three course so only do flashcards for the topics that you don't understand do not do flashcards for things you already understand or remember because it's just always time and um, blurt the topics you have just covered treat your marks as if they were in your exams because they're just helpful to do that learn from your marks learn from your past paper questions learn from your exam questions mark them learn your mistakes revise your mistakes using the videos or something else make sure you teach your friends if they need it because it will help you and it will help them which is just beneficial to everyone so yeah that's pretty much my summarization of what this video entails make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it leave a comment down below and subscribe for more content i'll see you next time bye and it goes a little something like